And one of the things that I found the most difficult for me is, is silence indoors. And, and uh, is, you know, it was one of the first things that I noticed when I was on my own, that I can't stand silence, you see. I've, I've got to have a human voice around. Well, I've always been quite independent and it's this dripping away at my independence now which is getting to me because I've had health issues and then being on my own as well, you do start to worry a bit. I've worked in mills, uh, I've worked in manufacturing places where there is a lot of people. Uh, I never had any bother but because I'm on my own, uh, I don't seem to be able to associate with people like I did. But I do find sometimes being on my own is quite frightening, you know, because you think, Ooh, what if I get ill, Real, you know, and nobody knows. I find that part a bit frightening now. Well, because I've got arthritis really badly now, uh, I'm finding it very difficult to do my cleaning. I find it difficult to bend down. As I say, the older I'm getting, and the worse it is to do. And I, I get frustrated because I'm not as fit, not as independent. I mean, he did have a car, but he's had to give it up. He's 93. I mean, you can't go on forever, can you? I wasn't so bad in my 60s, but now I've got into my 70s. I'm starting to think about things more and, and, and worry about my health and yeah. one thing or another. You know, you get a bit down because of the daily routines gone funny or or what have you, and then uh, that, that's it. And then you start to think, you know, what if I was to go tonight on my own, you know? <laughs> you can only do what you can do, so long as you keep trying and persevering. And they don't respect, they don't respect you at all, you know, even though you're old, you know. I've even been told to get out of the way while I'm walking. I, I would never have no noticed before when I was with my partner and we were walking into town and walking around. You're not really looking at, uh, you probably do look at other people occasionally, but you're not really looking at them. But now I'm on my own and I'm walking along and I notice nobody looks at you. You know, you're completely, you're walking along and, uh, and they will actually walk into you if, you if you, you know, almost as if you're not there. But I've also found changing attitudes about, it's the, the government don't help by saying, oh, there's so many bed blocking, there's so many doing this, uh, you know, and we're living too long, which I find is wrong. <laughs> and I've been uh, to other countries abroad and they have a different attitude about elderly people. They respect, and there's no way would anybody be left on their own and nobody to care about them. And that's what I'm finding is changing because people are too busy going about whatever they're doing to look out for anybody. You know, people so got busy lives. Everybody seems to be busy, rushing from A to B these days. Uh, nobody takes any notice of you. Yeah. You, I, I, could, I could walk around Wakefield when it's completely packed with people and uh, you, you, you're on, you know, nobody notices you. Yeah, that is strange. Well, just now, uh, because the person I lost was just before Christmas, that hasn't really hit me yet. At first, I was reluctant to leave the house. I didn't want to go shopping. Um... I didn't want to go see friends, a lot of friends I still haven't got in touch with. I'm on my own because my husband died at the end of January this year. And um, I'm trying to get my life on track. I've uh, booked quite a few day trips and a few holidays just in England to see how I go on at first. It itch you when you're lonely. Nobody there at the table, nobody got the meals ready for, you know, and uh, she could bench you, know, but you could talk to her, you know, and that was a lot of difference. And she would answer you now and again, but it, it was vaguely. But uh, it was company, you know, company. Yeah. And she passed away, of course, and it, the loneliness set in. 
uh, you look back at funny things and it makes you laugh, you know. But when you have to put them in a home and you go see them every day and then they're not there, it's hard for you. And you get up in the morning and she wasn't there to have a breakfast or a cup of tea or tucked in the car somewhere, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's very lonely. Yeah. In fact, now I'm just coming to terms with, I like coming down to earth, if you like, from being in a carer. I'm still like, sometimes I'm in that carer's mode, if you know what I mean. And it's, uh, it's hard. But um, I think a lot of it is people expect you to get over things quick. And you can't do that. I can't stand silence, you see. I've, I've got to have a human voice around. Uh, how to reach social services. I found, I found that quite difficult. Uh, quite a difficult thing, you know. They do give you, you do get, I do get lots of information, but it's, when you're older, it's difficult to take things on board, you know. We, 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 on the Tuesday leisure club, sometimes people come to talk to us and they talk about different things and what they say makes sense. But as soon as they've gone and you go back to, to your routine, you're trying to think, well, what, what was that about, you know, what did they say? They give you paperwork to read, but do you read it? I was given a lady doctor, right, who I hadn't seen before. I, 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 when I went to see her, I had several problems. I was having trouble with my back. Obviously, I talked about my diabetes. I was getting a bit of pain in my chest at the time. So I said, oh, I've got trouble in my back and I've got pain. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on, you've only got ten minutes, she said. One thing at a time. Of course, that startled me. So I thought, well, me and you aren't going to get on. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to tell you my problems and you don't want to listen. But... Eventually she explained to me, and she was right, really. You're allowed ten minutes. It's unbelievable. One of my relatives has got Alzheimer's. She's been in hospital six weeks, blocking her bed because the care homes won't take her because of all her needs. And her husband, who's 90, is having to travel three times a day to see her, and this is how it is. I wanted to go and see if I could book an appointment with, with my doctor. And I went in there and said, can I book an appointment with my doctor? I didn't care when it would be. I think, oh, you can't do that, she said. You need to ring tomorrow morning. And, 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 and if, if the doctor, I nearly said the name then, if doctor whatever name, uh, will we, we, tell you whether she can think, you know, she, but you can't take a book in. So I said, well, that is strange. And then she said to me, but you could see another doctor if you want, a different one. So I accepted that. And I, the following day or the day after, I saw no, doctor, if I think it was, uh, which was, wasn't my doctor. I had to explain to him, and uh, he, he sort of taught me through it. But uh, not ideal. No. no. You need to see your own doctor. Uh, and I, I would like, what I would like to see is all the social services, you know, the, the doctors and, and the hospitals and, and the welfare people all working together rather than working as separate entities. And it would probably be better for people, I think. There needs to be a thing about keep classes going because... You know, what, what What else do we do? Are, are we going to be at the doctors all the time saying, right, you know, because you get depressed, especially winter, but can't they solve anything, do anything, you know? Because obviously we're probably costing more if we're going to the doctors all the time, you know, prescriptions or whatever. And, you know, I just think, why? Why are you cutting everything for older people? What? is the solution, you know, if it's just down to money, is there anything that can be done? Can't doctors and, and people get involved? Because obviously it must affect them if we're all swooping off to the surgery. You know, they're not looking at the long-term picture here at all. Well, I try to go out every day. And if, unless it's really bad weather, I do go out every day. Saturday is my sort of, what I would have said was my lonely day, but I try and go out on my own. Uh, but 
so that when I do meet my friends, I have something to tell them, really. Oh, marvellous, absolutely marvellous. I, I couldn't do what I do without the free bus passes. I am very appreciated of the uh, Access Bus, which takes us shopping on a Tuesday and brings our shopping in the house. Oh, I get on and off on the buses, all right. They drop the platform down, you know. But you can't go out in in the rain, not for obvious reasons. It's electric, in it? So yeah. <laughs> you can't go out in the rain, in it? So sometimes you're going to be in the house for a while, aren't you? The weather, really. If it's foggy or frost, the snow or ice, I won't even think about going out because I've broken my leg. I've had it in plaster three times, so I don't risk it anymore at my age. We do get taxis a lot um, to go down to the doctors. Or, so we're having to use taxis a lot more to get about. Our main thing is getting taxes, isn't it, you know? Well, yeah, we're having to... I mean, what do you expect when you're 93? You, know, you can't you run can, about yeah, all over the place, can you? Yeah. On a night, when you're on your own, it is. Uh, during the day, you can always pop on, <coughs> man, me, pop on a bus. I used to like the theatre, but now, <clears throat> when you come out of the theatre at night, there's all these young gangs and groups of people, you know, walking about and drunks and everything. And uh, I always feel I don't like dark. So I always feel a bit intimidated, you know. And it, to me, to walk past all these... Well, somebody to take us out in a car. <laughs> now and again, it'd be lovely. A chauffeur, private chauffeur. Uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be lovely. Somebody to take us out in a car, that's what we really miss. Very, very important, yes. Um, I did used to come to the cookery classes, the keep fit classes, the yoga classes. F I tried flower arranging, but I, that wasn't me. Because I felt, I felt so alone after she passed away. And I thought, what, what shall I do? What can I do? Where, where can I go? And things like that. There's a place in town, it's like a coffee bar thing for community, and I'm going to go in there and see what they've got. Just join something and get going, you know. <laughs> You've got to do because nobody's going to come and knock on your door and say, come on, you know, even though I've got good family and that, you know. They said there's a trip to Whitby, so I booked on a trip to Whitby because one of my youngest will go to Whitby all the time in the caravan, you see. And so that's going to fetch back memories on that trip. And I'm looking forward to that. And of course, they have us days out and things like that. And this helps. And I wanted to learn about computers. So I came on a computer course here. And as a consequence of doing that, I found out about the Tuesday Leisure Club for older people and people with disabilities and what have you. So I joined that. And I've been a member of that ever since. So that helps. Yeah. It gets me out once a week on a Tuesday afternoon and we, for a couple of hours, uh, we meet up, you know, and friendship. It wasn't just the learning. We had social time. We went out every so often for a meal as a group. And you had friends. And at Christmas time, we go out for Christmas dinner, which is nice. You know, it's socialising. Yeah, which is something. <laughs> I think just meeting people here and talking to people, you know what I mean? And they introduce you to other things and things like that as you go on. I think I'll take it from there. The people that I met here are nice, you know. They, I just talk to people, see. It's a big, big plus. Because they say, use your brain. But now these classes have gone because of the cuts. And I, I want to still keep active, keep my brain going. And uh, I would advise anybody that's, that's on their own, like myself, who's, who's not sure were to go from from now to next to the next day, something like this is quite helpful to them. And there's a lot like me that would prefer to learn. I mean, I don't think you're ever too old to learn. I can't stand silence. You see, I've I've got to have a human voice around. 
And one of the things that I found the most difficult for me is, is silence indoors. And, and it's, you know, was one of the first things that I noticed when I was on my own, that I can't stand silence, you see. I've, I've got to have a human voice around. So as a consequence of that, ever since I've been on my own, television comes on first thing in the morning, or the radio will come on, and it stays on until I go out, or and it comes back on as soon as I come back in, and stays on until I go to bed at night, basically, because I need that voice in the room. And I've I've spoken to a lot of people about this, you know, and uh, they they're the same. I find a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, I do that," mm. you know, subconsciously, I suppose, but they do it because they can't stand being in a room on their own. I'm pretty forward, really, you know, in, in my outlook of things. But I'm trying not to, like, get down, you know, and things like that, like... The routine keeps me going because I, I, uh, I, I get up in the morning, I have, a, I have a set routine when I get up, although I don't realise it, and I go down, I put the kettle on, uh, television goes on straight away, or the radio, just to have something in the room. Uh, I make myself a cup of tea and I have a banana. And then I sit there and I might watch a bit of television or read the, read the paper that I may not have read the day before. And I have breakfast around about half 10, 11 o'clock. And that keeps me going then until uh, evening, which I tend to have my evening meal between 6 and 7. Well, I do that on a regular basis, you see, so it's like a routine. Yeah, it, it's a routine I've got into and uh, I stick to it, you know, come what may, you know. I have found, like, sleeping... That's bad. And sometimes I get up about two o'clock in the morning and I'll make myself a cheese and tomato sandwich. <laughs> a man needs a woman, definitely, yeah. to, to help him with his everyday life because there's things like I, I, I didn't used to iron. Now I iron. I, 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 I couldn't... I know it's an awful thing to say. I didn't. I just switched the washing machine on. Oh, I think it's much harder for men, definitely, because they haven't got that... We've got neighbours that we can see during the week, whereas a man, they tend to more go out with their friends, don't they, to the pub or golf course. Um, I think it's much, much harder for men, really do. If I'm fed up or if I was feeling miserable, I could pour out my heart to a, a friend or a neighbour and she would do the same to me, where I think men bottle it up. They, they, don't, they feel it's too too soft to say how they feel. You see, you've got to be careful for drink as well. You know, it's so easy to go to the bottle and things like that, or, and you've got to be really careful. You've not got to expect anything, really. You've got to make an effort. I don't care how old you are. I think you've, you've just got to make the effort. Mm which isn't always easy, and, and believe you me, I've had some miserable days when I've thought, oh, you know, what's it all about? But then I've booked up the next day and think, oh, well, <laughs> it's up to me now, and I'll probably ring three or four people that day yes. just to get back in touch. It's because you could, you could go out and you could, have a, you could have a good day, you know. I, I, I've got, as a consequence of the Tuesday Club, I know a lady now that, who, who, who I've met, and she, she said... She was lonely, and I, you know, I sort of said, well, look, would you like to meet up once a week, you know, for coffee, uh, which is what we do. We meet every Friday now, which is nice, a couple of hours together. But at the end of the day, I say cheerio to her, she says cheerio to me. We then go back home and shut the door, and then that's total isolation again. It hits home. As soon as you put the door shut and put the lock on, you're back to square one. I mean, yesterday I... Three great grandchildren there, and my granddaughter, and her mum, you know, and things like that. So, but if, if no immediate family's near, it can be difficult. Now, when I came, my son was in Horbury, and he's moved to Leeds now, and he lives the other side of Leeds. Uh, it's not ideal, you see. He's too far away. Uh, ideally, would you know if he was close? And he's the only relative I've got here now, basically. We don't have any any family that lives near. Well, my neighbour, they both go out to work, but they're very good. That you know, they they've got my key. Uh, 
they ring me occasionally. I do see them in the garden. They look after the dustbins. They take my bins down to the road for me because I have a very long drive, a, a really long drive. And they do look after me, yes. They're very good neighbours. But most of them now, I get round where I live, are old because it was a new estate in the 1960s with young people and a lot of people are just got old and they've stayed there, like me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah, because they've got their own lives, you know, the uh, next door he works and obviously, um, I mean, the lady, the, I did a, a, a test, the lady across has got a, a key to my house and what I did, I left all my curtains and everything closed and she never came to see if I were all right, you know. And, I mean, I am a creature of habit that will be open as soon as you go. And I just thought, well, why, you know, you should be looking out to see. <laughs> You've yeah. got a key. Well, we don't really get involved with neighbours. We say good morning, but, no, we don't ask them. Yeah, we don't ask them to help us, but there are a lot of them. Most of them are old where we live. So they all have their own problems, don't they? Trying to make friends is, uh, at my age, 60 to 70, you, you know, and, and 70 plus, which I am now. It's, it's very, very difficult, you know. You know, you can't just, like I said to you, you, you know, earlier, you can't just go out into the street and say, whoa, will you be my friend? They would think you're a lunatic or something. You've, you've got to be careful. You, you're not uh, intrusive to other people. You know, you just say, uh, like, hello, nice weather or bad weather and things like that. And, and, and the, 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 the thing about being alone, because uh, you're on your own 24-7, basically, and when you do get to talk to somebody, you're quite confused a lot of the time because you don't really know what to say because you haven't spoken to anybody for quite a while, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's very difficult sometimes. And you have to be careful because some people really go over the top when you have somebody sat at side of you, you know. Uh, you know, so it's difficult. It's, you know, and it's the same for everybody. Everybody at my age. Play, play. My, the youngsters say, oh, you should get out and you should... But it, you can't. It's not easy at my age. It's not. It's very, very difficult, you know. Because I don't go out on a Saturday afternoon by myself and uh, just uh, walk around town centres, something like that, and go for a pork pie shop or something like that, you know what I mean? But I talk to people there like that. So what I do, and ever, ever since, is I go shopping on a daily basis. One, it gets me out of the house. It gives me... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing with people, even though I may not be talking to them. And I can get the things on a daily basis, and I don't waste things. And that's the reason I do it. It's, it's, it's to be out and about, you know, to, to, to walk, to talk, I suppose. Although you don't really talk to people, but talk to the, the, uh, the assistant on the count checkout counter or something like that, but, uh, the people I talked to mainly were like your doctors, nurses, carers and Alzheimer's people. You know, that, that sort of people. I don't know how you do it. I don't, really don't know how. You know, unless you just by chance spoke to somebody in the street one day and the friendship developed from that. Uh, but does it happen? No, I doubt it. One of the first things that I noticed when I was on my own that I can't stand silence, you see. I've, I've got to have a human voice around.